and then I heard the UPS truck the battery came in I can't even move it it's so heavy powerful lithium times two we've got both powerful lithium batteries hey YouTube it's Adam back here with part five of our 72 volt conversion of our super 73 RX we're getting our battery in the mail today so we're hurrying to put on the calipers for our Magura brake set we're gonna do that by putting on an adapter to go to the enlarged rotor sizes that we have all of the links to the rotors levers adapters are in the description so go ahead and check out those Amazon links and order your own set also I have the link in there for the enclosure and I have the link in there for the motor and controller direct from Aliexpress you do have options but I've put in the cheapest option so far we are getting the battery from powerful lithium I will put the links in the description below as well the battery isn't the cheapest way we can go it's actually maxing out the capacity that this bike can hold for a 72 volt system like I said I'm a range rider and I'm looking for the most range but I'm very excited to get the battery today so I'm gonna try to hurry up and get these brakes finished before I jump on those calipers, I'm going to try to mess around with this pedal assist. Alright, the crank is removed. I got a little head of, head of myself here and did a few steps without filming it. But basically you take off the crank with a crank puller. Once you get the middle screw of the crank off, you got to put in the crank puller which pries out the crank. Once the crank was off, it exposes the original pedal assist what I did was is I unscrewed the pedal assist exposing the guts I ripped out the guts and the original wire and what I did was I trimmed it down flush as I could so I cut off all of the excess plastic with some wire snips and th that way it acted as a washer to hold the new pedal assist in place because the new pedal assist comes with just a circle so if you don't make this sort of uh, washer holder for it it just free floats but this kind of holds it into place all I did here was grind the face plate down to the last layer of plastic flush as possible then I put trim down the lock nut to make it sit flush and then put over the new pedal assist cover on top of that and you're ready to go the crank on it looks like it's going to be working and monitoring properly so i'm going to flip this bike over and get the rotors going i was in the middle of putting on the adapter for the rear calipers and then i heard the ups truck the battery came in the box looks a little flimsy but we are going to open this thing up and take a look at the battery Whew. the box looks a little flimsy but it's very well packed inside we've got a ton of bubble wrap keeping everything safe bubble wrap on bubble wrap Ooh. first things first we got the mount for the jumbo battery Ooh. That's going to go right on top. It's going to go into the stock position. That's awesome. Looks like we've got a charger here. We'll open up that later. Looks like we got another charger here. We requested two chargers. That way I can have a one at home base and one somewhere else. Ooh, now this is looking like a jumbo shark. Get this uh, cut open. There she is, the powerful lithium battery jumbo shark. Looking real clean. We've got the keys to take it on and off the rack. We've got a connector to hook it up in parallel to the monster battery that lies below this jumbo shark is 
from powerful lithium it's 10.4 amp hours now this big boy right here I can't even move it it's so heavy it's a big 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 battery 72 volts 60 amp hours and it's gonna fit up right in the center of this enclosure bam there she is powerful lithium 60 amp hour 72 volt looking like it's gonna take up most of that enclosure we'll get it mocked up just here in a few seconds all right so I've got the battery inside of the enclosure it's a very tight fit I mean very tight it barely fits I'm putting these straps on so I can put the controller on top that's also a tight fit it looks like I'm gonna have to Dremel off the mounting brackets for this to fit in as well and hopefully it will fit so if you do plan on getting this big battery from powerful lithium to install it I recommend you take the top bolt off and the bottom bolt off on the side to give you the clearance that you need to install the kit all right so it's very tight very hard to get this battery in here it looks like it's fitting just barely and it looks like the controller is going to fit just barely on top but I'm still getting it situated I might flip this controller the other direction have all the wires on the back so there's a little bit more room it feels like it's a little bit tighter on this side maybe I'll put all the connections on the back side but it is fitting there it is working So I'm extremely relieved that it fits. It looks like it will be a very tight fit to wire everything up, but it's definitely gonna work. I'll be able to run these two batteries in parallel. The hardest thing about this battery is the front here. It's hard to picture, but the enclosure has a curve to it. So that curve right there at the bottom makes it really hard on this sharp corner. So you have to actually have the battery lifted up so the battery is sitting on that little peg that's on the opposite side of the frame I'm gonna put a, uh, some sort of rubber underneath the battery to hold it into the position that it needs uh, as far as powerful lithium they did send I wanted to show the charger that they sent with it it's pretty cool it's branded it has their phone number right there and a QR code that who knows what that does and it has uh, the two short leads that come with it to charge the battery. Um, they were missing the splitter, so I will have to wait for that. So that's going to put me back a couple days. But I'm going to move on to putting on the rear adapter for the caliper. Get back to the brakes. In order to install the back caliper, we're going to have to use an adapter to go from 180 to 203 millimeters. The way that I look at this bracket is it has an up arrow here. So the up arrow I put on the side that's going up. In order to put the caliper on, I like to just put the adapter onto, onto the caliper first and then slide it onto to the mount. One screw is a lot longer than the other because the adapter is bigger on one side than the other so make sure that you have adequate clearance on the screws at the bottom to bite into the mount now in order to put it on we're gonna slide it onto the rotor first and then worry about the positioning after after we've landed in between the rotor so I'm gonna go ahead and get this situated and tightened up with these two screws I'm just going to make sure that they're equal spacing on both sides so we're running into a problem with the spacing on the caliper as you can see the front side there's a big gap on the back side it's rubbing I've got the caliper off to push it in all the way that I can but it's still just not giving us the clearance that we need so 
I think I may have to adjust the spacer in the back, maybe get a bigger one or figure this out. So I think I'm going to take a break on the brakes for this second. Since we're going to have to wait a couple days for the rear caliper spacers for the rotor, I thought it would probably be a good idea to check the front caliper to see if there's going to be any spacing issues. I mounted this the same way that I showed earlier when I did the rear caliper. I used an adapter plate to go from the 203 stock millimeter size to 220 millimeter. The adapter that I used is a Magura adapter. I heard that there's a lot of issues with the MT5E Magura brakes if you use a different brand uh, adapter because a lot of different companies make the adapter. But for I think this little bump here on the caliper of the Magura set is problematic for other brands. I think it hits there. But anyways, I put these calipers on. They are fitting perfectly, so I don't have to worry about that. I threw the lever just around my handlebar for now. I want to do the front and back at the same time. But it's nice to know that I don't have any issue with any spacing on the, the front set. It looks really good on the bike. I can't wait to ride this thing while i'm waiting for to finish the brakes what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to throw the seat on and i really want to see how it looks with the jumbo shark on the top rail here i really want to see what it looks like so i'm going to put that on there right now all right so the seat that i'm using is the blurred boundary seat i have used a blurred boundary seat in the past before this is this particular one is new to me uh, it, it is a very comfortable seat. It's very easy to install and it's the first thing we took off for this build So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it back on here. It's the three bolts underneath. I'm gonna get that mounted now Seat is installed really like the way it looks Like I said, I've had this seat before so I do like the blurred boundary seat. They're very Comfortable. I like it's a lot softer than the OC cafe racer uh, That one is very stiff Honestly, what I've heard the best reviews were from people that just went to a local upholstery store shop and they got gave them a seat and they got the most comfortable seats that way and probably a little bit better price. But now I'm going to throw the rail on. That way I can see what this bad boy is going to look like. Powerful lithium times two. We've got both powerful lithium batteries on the bike. We've got the Jumbo Shark on top here. This is a 10.4 amp hour battery. Of course, 72 volts and 130 amp discharge. This battery uses the 18650 cells, but they're the Molly cell, the super high discharge one. They're super hot right now. It's a very, very good cell. Uh, I think the battery is going to perform very well, especially in parallel. I really wanted to keep the look of the bike so I like how the Super 73 kind of has the gas tank look and even though it's a jumbo it's still a gas tank look and I think it's gonna look really good on the bike I think it looks good already below that we've got the big boy the 72 volt 60 amp hour 140 amp discharge now this one uses the 21700 Samsung 50 e cells so this is the tesla battery the big boy the main power source that thing's as good as it can get the creme de la creme i'm really excited about this battery i think it's cool that it's it definitely looks like we're maxing out the bike frame here we're getting the most battery on this bike as possible i will have a link below powerful lithium i bought the battery straight out this battery is 2700 bucks the top battery is about i think 750 bucks um i'm waiting on the splitter for them but they did they did give me a promo code to share with everybody it's the name of my channel and my name which is adam atom my battery ran out of juice there but the promo code for powerful lithium is the name of my channel which is adam 
A-T-O-M-0023. I will, of course, have it in the description below. A link to Powerful Lithium and what the discount code is for the $50 off your purchase, which is my username. It's been a couple days since I w was filming last. The splitter has come in. Powerful Lithium pretty much overnighted it to me because they forgot it in the order, which was very nice of them. I got the splitter here. The splitter is pretty awesome. They custom made a splitter that would run both the batteries in parallel. Obviously this is the input for the 72 volt sh jumbo shark and the big connector is the big boy on the bottom battery. So the two powers come in, goes into the middle here. This connector will go into the controller. So that will be our hot power, you know, those will be our power lines that are negative and are positive. Now there's two other connectors on here. One is to charge the system and the last connector is actually to go down to a 72 volt to 12 volt step converter so I can power my lights, my uh, the lights and maybe a cell phone charger but definitely need brake lights, the headlight, I'm going to put some accessory lights on here. Anything that's going to be run off of a normal 12 volt circuit since we took off all of the original stuff it needs to be replaced so I'll use one of these connectors to tap into the 72 volt system so that will be our inlet to get into all of the power that we have on the bike now powerful lithium they are a new company they just started out of New Jersey I spoke and FaceTimed with the owner uh, directly seems like a very nice guy see obviously I've got my batteries they're a very legitimate company uh, I can vouch for the quality of it yet just because I haven't used it I'm gonna do extensive range tests in the future I'm gonna be doing a lot of riding videos so we'll definitely put these batteries through the paces I do have some friends that have used them. They recommended me to power powerful lithium, so I didn't just go to them blind. So I'm very confident that the quality is going to be there because my friend said that it was. So I can't wait to test these batteries, get this build done. I also want to thank everybody. Uh, I know I'm late with this video. This week has been a really awesome week for the channel. I think we doubled our subscribers. We started at 69. Now we're over 140. So that's super awesome. Thank you everyone for subscribing. We're going to have a lot of good progress this week. We've got all the parts in. Everything that we need is here. Uh, we're just waiting on the back spacers for the rotor still. And we're going to get this thing buttoned up. So please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.